Hello, I'm Anna Mackay and today we're looking at zeros, roots and factors. What's the difference and similarities between them all? So polynomials have zeros. Equations have roots or solutions. So thinking about what a zero means. If something is a zero, what could that possibly mean it does? So the zeros of polynomial px are the roots of what? Of the polynomial when it's equal to zero. Um, for example, here's our polynomial here. It's factorized into three linear factors. These are our factors. Um, what about here? What's that factorized into? How many linear factors? Three, but one's repeated. So it is three factors, but it's got the same one twice. And a reminder, if a quadratic has zeros alpha and beta, then it has form uh, quadratic like this with a out the front and it's subtract the sum of x plus the product where the sum is the sum of those two zeros, alpha and beta, and the product is then multiplied together. So let's get into some examples. That might be a little bit hazy up to this point, but let's try and put it into practice. Find all cubic polynomials with these zeros. So first of all, identify what they are as factors. These are your zeros, as it said, so they are numbers that you could substitute in and make that polynomial equal to zero. Writing them as factors though, we would have one factor of x subtract one, x subtract four, and x add five. So there are individual linear factors. And how do we write that polynomial? Well, it's p of x, the a out the front, because that's the dilation factor, if you like, and we're not able to solve that at this point in time. And then you write it as um, a polynomial with all its linear factors. And that's how we answer that question. However, one point about a, it can't be equal to zero because if it was, it wouldn't be a cubic anymore. And the second one, um, so our first fact, linear factor, I suppose you might start off thinking of it as x take a half, but we tend to write it more as two x take one. So that's one linear factor. Now the next one, as you can see, we've got a square root here, a complex root. So um, we need to identify the sum and the product. So the sum of those two, so we've got negative three plus root two, adding them together. However, because it's a negative three, it's a subtract and the subtract root two, um, what happens? The root twos cancel out. So we're left with negative six and the product multiplying them together, negative three, add root two, multiplied by negative three, take root two. Hopefully you know that what's gonna cancel out here and we've got this, the net, um, negative three multiplied by negative three, and then the root two multiplied by negative root two, what we're going to get there is nine um, subtract two, which will be give us seven. So what do we do with that? We now have to write that as a quadratic. So we've got x squared, it was subtract the sum. Actually, what I might do is I'll just write this out where we're heading. It's the x squared take alpha plus beta x add alpha beta. So the first one is subtract the sum and subtract negative six. So we've got plus x and finishing off plus seven. But we haven't quite finished. We have to write that polynomial out. So we would have p of x is equal to put in a where a is not equal to zero. Our first linear factor was two x take one. And then our quadratic factor is um, x squared plus six x plus seven. And that's that one. Next, a little bit more complex here. Consider this equation. And using a sign diagram for the discriminant, find the values of k for which the equation has all these different combinations. So I guess the first thing you'd start thinking about is the discriminant. So of a quadratic, we need it in a particular form. Hmm, but we've got the one on the right hand side. You need to shift that to the left so that we can get the right hand side equal to zero. So we write k x squared equal to zero. Now we can start thinking about the discriminant and for that we need to identify our a, our b term and our c term. 
and substituting that in to the discriminant, we would get for our b term, we have to square that whole thing. Please don't write k squared plus 3 squared. Um, that's not how you do it. You have to square the whole um, expression. There, take 4k times by negative 1. Now, expanding out that bracket, perfect square, plus 4k, collecting like terms, k squared plus 10k plus 9. Now it's actually going to be easier if we factorise this. So looking at that 9, factors of 9, and in this case to get 10 we've got positive 9 and positive 1. Right, moving on now, we need to use a sign diagram. I'll just write what we had here before. That for our discriminant it's equal to this. So to draw a sign diagram, here we are, we've got our values of negative 9 and negative 1. Just having a think about what have we done here, this is the discriminant and if the discriminant is greater than 0 we could we would have two distinct real roots. If the discriminant is equal to 0 we would have one repeated root and less than 0 no real roots. So we're trying to find values of k that um, would be I guess that you know the coefficient of x squared there and that term there that could go into this equation to create all those different scenarios. Um, of repeated roots or two distinct roots etc. So what values of k will give us all these different scenarios? So here's our sign diagram. Now to work out the signs you could graph this quadratic but um, substitute in a number greater than negative 1. My suggestion is sub in 1. If you substitute 1 in here for k you're going to get um, 10 multiplied by 2. What is that? It doesn't matter what a number is the fact is it's positive. So that's a positive number. And then because these are linear factors, you can alternate the signs around this sign diagram without actually having to calculate them. That's a fact. All right, so now let's get into answering part A, B, C, and D. Part A, two distinct real roots. What does that mean for the discriminant? We need it greater than zero. So now you come and have a look at your sign diagram. When is it greater than zero? You're looking at the positive regions here. So for the first one, it's when k is less than negative 9 and k is greater than negative 1. Probably worth putting here as well that k cannot be equal to 0 because if it was, think about the function here, we wouldn't have a quadratic anymore. The second one, two real roots. Now, what's the difference there? This was two distinct real roots and two real roots. So only one word difference there. But to be distinct, they have to be separate. So this second one here means it could be the same one. So in this case, we could have a repeated root. So this time we're putting it equal to zero. And so it's the same areas when it's um, when that discriminant is greater than zero. But this time around, it can equal those critical values. So when k is less than or equal to negative nine, and k is greater than or equal to negative one. Part C, a repeated root. Therefore, our discriminant is equal to zero. Hmm, when is our discriminant equal to zero here? Well, on these critical values. Because if you were to substitute negative 9 into this discriminant here, the whole thing would equal zero. So therefore, when k is equal to negative 9 and negative 1. And part D, uh, for our no real roots, the discriminant has to be less than zero. And you look at the region of the sign diagram, when is it less than zero? That's when it's negative. So it's between, so k is between negative 9 and negative 1. Do I put equal to or not? No, because if I did, if it was equal to zero, that changes the types of answers that you'd get. You'd get repeated roots. I only want it when it's no real roots. Okay, good. The next video in this series is factorizing cubic polynomials. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.